Good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. First of all, I want to say congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Won their second straight Super Bowl. Third Super Bowl in the last five years. Can somebody say dynasty? Pat Mahomes, 28 years old. Young brother done won him three Super Bowls. And I'm so, so, so very happy for Andy Reid, one of the great coaches in all of pro sports. Hopefully, hopefully, they will put his name in the same sentence as Bill Belichick and the great NFL head coaches. So for all you Chief fans out there, congratulations. San Francisco fans, hey, y'all don't got nothing to hang your head down on. Y'all had a great season, but that's why they play the game. Somebody got to win. That, that, that reminds me of life in general, right? And I know some of y'all are going to disagree with this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Life is about winning. That's why they keep score in life, just like they keep score in sports. If it wasn't about winning, they wouldn't keep score. Now in life, when we look at it from this financial thing, how is it about winning and losing? Well, if you get to your financial freedom, you won. If you don't get to your financial freedom, you're lost. It's that simple, guys. We keep score for a reason because winning is important. It ain't the only thing, but it's important. So this morning, I wanted to talk a little bit about how much money do you need to keep in the bank? Because I get questions quite frequently from you guys asking, hey man, what's the right of money, money to keep in the bank? I'm trying to get out here and build this wealth, but I also need some security. I need a safety net. I need to do some things with some money that's uh, need to happen in the next 12 months. Do I need to put all my money in the stock market? Do I need to keep all my money in the bank? What's really the rule of thumb? And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit this morning while I'm out here getting this healthy in. Y'all know that's important, guys. You gotta make time you gotta make time for your health remember i told you life is about winning and losing whether we like it or not it's about winning and losing i'm out here trying to win with this health thing because i know if i can keep my body this temple in tip-top shape i give myself a chance to live a long life and, and and really live it right but i gotta but i gotta keep the temple in tip-top shape so i'm out here this morning getting this health in like I try to do every single morning. I, I encourage you guys to do some activity. Move your body, right? Watch your diet. Hey, I'm no perfect eater, but I definitely do everything I can to watch my diet, not to put stuff in my body that I know is gonna harm my body. And later on down the road, I pay the price for it. So I'm gonna I'm a recommend you guys do the same thing, man. Get that health right. This wealth we getting ready to build in 2024, <laughs> it don't matter if we ain't got no, no health to go with it, right? We gotta have some health to enjoy this wealth, right? Gotta have some health to enjoy this wealth. So let's make sure we get out today and do something active. Put some activity in our life to, to, to keep our temple Keep our temple strong and, and, and don't put anything in your body. Try to not put anything in your body that's going to be counterproductive when it comes to your health, man. I get it. I have a cheat day every now and then, guys. Don't get me wrong. But man, I'm not going to have a cheat day every day. That's You can't have a cheat day every day, man, when it comes to, to your diet, right? So, so be careful with what you consume and what you put in your temple. And then get out here and move your body. I don't care if it's 20 minutes a day. Now, I get out here about an hour, an hour, 15 minutes a day. But sometimes I wouldn't have. But the key is get out there for 20 minutes, man, a day and just move your body. 
while you're at home, stretch, do some exercises, jumping jacks, that kind of stuff, right? Got to keep that health to enjoy that wealth, okay? Also, let me just uh, lock it in with a thumbs up, guys, if y'all appreciate the, the live stream. Go ahead and lock it in with a thumbs up. You know those thumbs ups are important to this YouTube algorithm. So that way we make sure we get this content out to more people so we can help more people. But y'all know how these algorithms are. They like them like buttons. So lock it in with a like. Lock it in with a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. And I really would appreciate it. One more quick thing. And then we're going to dive into it, guys. Um, y'all know my new brokerage app is Moomoo. I started using Moomoo in 2024. I'm happy with it. So of course, anytime I use something that I'm happy with, that I think can help me build wealth, I'm gonna introduce it to you guys. Moomoo Moo link down in the description box of this video. Now, Moomoo's Moo gonna give you up to 15 free stocks when you open a Moomoo Moo brokerage account. When you put $100 in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you five free stocks. You put $1,000 in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you 15 free stocks. This is a tool, guys, we're going to use in 2024 to build wealth. We're going to buy paper assets using this Moomoo app. And um, I'm going to be making videos on this Moomoo app, how I buy paper assets and what I buy when I buy. So it's easier for you to follow along if, if you decide to go ahead and open that Moomoo account. Do you have to open it? No, you do not have to open it. But if you're rocking with me, and you're trying to be on the same page I'm on, then it's free and I use it. So that's all I'm gonna say on the tip. Y'all link down in the description box, go get that free money, go get that free stock. All right, now let's dive on into this. How much money do I need to keep in my bank? Well, you know guys, that depends on what your financial goals are. Let's use me as an example, and then maybe that will shed some light on this thing for you. So the first thing I want to do when I'm building wealth is I need to maximize all the money that I earn in order to grow it to a point where I got a big old pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The question is, will me keeping excess money in my bank account help me do that? I don't believe it will because you won't earn enough interest in your bank account to multiply your money big enough where it will have a, a real impact on passive income later on down the road, right? So for me, what I try to do with my bank accounts, I keep my emergency fund in there, which is what? typically three to six months of my expenses. So I keep that. So let's say my expenses are $5,000 a month. The minimum I want to keep in my bank account is $15,000. The maximum I want to keep in there is $30,000 because my expenses are $5,000 a month. I want to keep six months of those expenses in my bank account between three to six months. That will cover my expenses just in case I hit a financial bump in the road. I get sick. I can't work. I get fired. That money is going to carry me through until I'm employed again, until I'm healthy again enough to work. So that is the first amount of money I want to keep in my bank at all times. And I keep that separate from my operating checking account. So what's an operating checking account? That's a checking account where I use every single day. I pay my bills out of it. I buy groceries out of it. I pay my utilities out of it. I pay, you know, whatever, I pay my mortgage out of it. That's my operating account, right? See, I run my personal finances like I run a business, right? I, I, I got an operating account when I own a business because I'm paying for stuff. I'm paying employees, I'm buying material, right? I want to do the same thing in my personal life. I want to have an operating checking account that's the center of my personal finance, that operating account. 
And then from that operating account, I'm gonna have legs. And each one of those legs is gonna represent an account. One of those legs is gonna represent my emergency fund, right? Three to six months of my expenses. The next thing I wanna think about is, okay, over the next 12 months, do I have any financial events that I'm gonna need to pay for? Because I don't wanna put that money in the stock market if it's short term, right? I don't wanna put no money in the stock market and paper assets in real estate that I need within the next 12 months. I don't wanna put that money in the stock market. I wanna keep that money in my bank as well. But it gotta be short term. So I gotta to think to myself over the next 12 months, am I gonna need money for something? Yeah, that's right, over the next 12 months I wanna have a down payment for my new house. That money you don't put in the stock market, guys. That money you keep in your bank because you're gonna need that money in 12 months to put a down payment on your new house. Or you might say, well, you know, my kid's college tuition is gonna be due. Or my kid's high school tuition, they go to private school, that's gonna be due in the next 12 months. So you don't wanna put that in the stock market. You don't wanna put no short-term uh, money that you're gonna need to use in the stock market. You wanna keep that in your savings account, in your money market account, right? So now there's another leg from that operating account. You got two legs right now. You got the operating account at the bank. You got the emergency fund one leg. You got the, the short term money leg right here next to the operating account. So you got two legs. So you got three accounts total that you got at the bank right now. And then you wanna have the account for investing because until I invest the money, I gotta keep it somewhere. That's gonna be the third leg. That's the third account that I have at my bank. So now I got my, no, I'm sorry, that's the fourth account I got at my bank. So I got my operating account where everything revolves around. That's the first account I got. The second account I got, my emergency fund. The third account I got is my short-term cash that I'm gonna need for, for over the next 12 months to, to, to do things. I got that account, right? That's the third account. And then my fourth account is gonna be my investing account. And that's the money that I'm gonna be investing long-term to build wealth. But that's where I hold the money until I put it into paper assets through my Moomoo account, right? That's where I hold the money. So, so right there, that's four accounts that I would have at my bank, right? That, those are the four accounts I would have at my bank. And they all serve a purpose. They all serve a purpose, but really the main account that I'm gonna be using to build wealth is that investing account. That's where I wanna put my money that I'm gonna be putting in paper assets for long-term wealth building. Every month, I'm gonna be automatically transferring that money out of that investment account into my brokerage account. And then from that brokerage account, it will go directly into what? long-term assets like S&P 500 ETFs that track the S&P 500 index. It'll go into like the Magnificent Seven. It'll go into sector ETFs like Information Technology Sector ETF. It might go into Healthcare ETF, right? It'll go into investments that are going to build my wealth and give me a big pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so that when I get to the golden years, I can do what? kick back and do the things that I really want to do and not have to worry about how I'm going to take care of myself. So that's the way I manage my finances, guys. It's not over complicated. I just have those four accounts and I manage my personal finances out of those four accounts. Now, to go along with those four accounts, guess what I got to have as well? I got to have a personal budget. See, that budget is going to assist me in managing my personal finances. It's going to assist me and help me manage those four accounts that I have at my bank. So I got to have a personal budget. Now you can get fancy and go on the, go on and get you an app and all that. I'm an old school dude. I just pin the paper pencil to paper. That's what I do. I just write it down. I keep me a little log. And anytime I need to check anything, uh, I just go to my 
personal finance budget. Some people call it a, a profit and loss statement. That's what they call it on the business side. But on the personal side, I just call it a personal financial, personal financial statement, personal financial budget worksheet. Now, also with my personal financial budget, I also want to keep what I call a assets and liabilities worksheet as well. I want to keep up with what my net worth is. Not only do I want to know what income is coming into my household and, and, and what income is going out and where I'm spending it. That's my personal budget. I also want to know at all times what my net worth is, because you got to understand, guys, the net worth is what creates the passive income. The higher my net worth is when it comes to assets that actually generate income, the better off I am the closer I am to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So let's, let's, let's recap real quick. I got the four accounts that I keep at my bank. I got my operating account, which is my everyday checking account that everything moves in and out from. All the money comes into what? A personal checking account. It comes into my checking account. And from my checking account, I disperse it to the other three accounts. I disperse money to the emergency fund. I disperse money to my short-term fund that I'm gonna use for whatever I need to use it for over the next 12 months. And then my long-term fund, which is my investment fund, I disperse money from the operating account to that. And that's the holding account until I put it into the Moomoo account or whatever other brokerage account you use. So that's what I do, guys, when it comes to managing my personal finances. And it's pretty simple, right? And like I said, to assist me in being really good at money management, I got to have a personal budget. I got to know all the income I got coming in and I got to know all my expenses going out. And I got to manage those expenses. I got to make sure I'm not spending money on things that will keep me from my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I got to delay some gratification, give up some stuff in the short term so I can have everything I want in the long term. That's the way we build wealth, guys. And then along with that personal budget, I need to have my assets and liabilities worksheet because I want to know exactly what assets I have and I want to know exactly what liabilities I have. Because if I take my assets minus my liabilities, that's my net worth. And the net worth, like I told you guys, the net worth is the key. That's the key to freedom. But it got to be a real net worth. It can't be inflated net worth. It can't be, oh, yeah, I got a Pokemon collection and that's worth $100,000. No. No. That, that, don't include that in the net worth. Right? We don't include that in the net worth. And I'm going to be, this is probably not going to be something a lot of people want to hear. But I wouldn't include my home in the net worth. I really wouldn't. Because you got to remember, your home, is, your home only becomes an asset when you get income from it. If, if you're not getting any income from your home, then it's not an asset. Right? It's a, well, it's an asset, but it's a dead asset. Let's put it that way. It's a dead asset. So only thing I would put on my assets side of my assets and liabilities worksheet is is assets that actually generate income well my stock portfolio don't generate no income yeah it does you're just not taking the income in most cases your stock if you're doing what i'm doing it's generating dividends it's also generating capital gains you're just not realizing the capital gains you're not taking the capital gains if you're doing it right it's throwing off a dividend which is income you're just reinvesting that dividend. So that's not true. It, it, it is generating income and it's appreciating. I bought it at $58 a share. It's worth $65 a share. That's appreciation that you could actually sell that investment. You paid 58. It's worth 65. You just made $7 per share in appreciation. That's income. So your stock portfolio, even though right now, you're not taking the income, it still generates income. You just choose to not take it and reinvest it to build more wealth, right? 
So you want to put assets that actually generate passive income at some point in the future, right? Me personally, I only put my cash that's in money market accounts earning interest, my stock portfolio, my stock portfolio that's doing what? Getting dividends, getting capital appreciation. Those are the two things that I put as assets. I put my NFL pension as an asset. Why? Because it's work I did in the past. Now I get a little small NFL pension for the rest of my life. That's an asset, right? That's an asset. I put that in my asset category. So I got my cash generating money in a money market. I got my investment portfolio, which is my paper assets portfolio, generating dividends, increasing in value from capital appreciation. I put the NFL pension there, right? And I got several other pensions that I'm not taking just yet from prior employers. I don't include the house. I got two homes that have a ton of equity in them, but they don't produce any income. So they're not an asset right now. They will be an asset when I go to sell them. <laughs> That's where they become an asset because now I get income from them. Right? I'm going to get some money from them. Hopefully, they'll appreciate in value and be worth more than what I paid for them yesterday. They'll be worth more tomorrow. But, but until that happens, I don't include them in the net worth. So really, the only thing in my net worth, when I calculate it, guys, is cash on hand, which is what I got in the bank. I include that. I include the stock portfolio. And I include my pensions. That's all I include, guys. I don't include anything else. I don't include my watch collection. I don't include the cars. They're all paid for, free and clear. I don't include none of that because none of that generates income for me unless I sell it. So I don't want to include nothing in my net worth, nothing in my cash net worth that doesn't generate income. Now, but that's just me. That's the way I run my personal finances and it's, it works very well for me, guys. It's very simple, nothing hard. I ain't got to read no books. I ain't got to do all this other stuff. Now, if you want to go out and do all of that, you can, but that's a waste of time for me. I don't got time to be reading no 300-page no book on how to set up a checking account. I just gave it to you. 15 minutes, just gave it to you. All you got to do is go out there and do it. See, a lot of times people just, when, when, they're, when they're hesitant and afraid, they make all kinds of excuses not to do stuff. The information is here, guys. You just got to act on it. What I just gave you is the blueprint. Now you can tweak it. If you want to include your house in your net worth ca calculation, include it. It's your net worth calculation. I'm just telling you how I do mine. You got to you gotta figure yours out for yourself. But, but for those of you out here, you know, keeping excess money in your bank account, guys, and you're not taking that excess money and building wealth, Guys, you're finna miss one of the greatest opportunities to transfer wealth in our lifetime. You're gonna, you're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss it waiting on whatever you're waiting on. Don't keep excess money in these bank accounts, man. Now, if you're someone who says, oh, Richard, I built my wealth. I'm in the enjoyment stage of wealth. I already got my income coming in from my assets and I wanna keep my money and I wanna keep a portion of my money into my bank because that's just my safety net. That's my, that's my peace of mind fund. I get it. I get it. Because I'm like that too. I keep a little bit more than I need to keep at my bank because it's a peace of mind fund. But I've already built my wealth. I've already built the majority of my wealth was built already. I'm still building wealth, but, but a lot of it was built before I even got on YouTube. So, so I understand someone says, hey man, I, I built my wealth. I'm in the enjoyment stage of wealth. So I'm going to keep some excess money in my, in my, in my bank because I just need a peace of mind. I just need to be able to sleep at night. This is all I got to live on. I get it. I, and I agree with you 100%. Ain't no sense of getting greedy. Protect your principal when that is all you have for the rest of your life. Don't, I wouldn't, I'd keep it in there too. But for a lot of you guys out here who ain't built no wealth, who ain't in the enjoyment stage of wealth, you're still in the building stage of wealth. I'm not sure what you got all your money in the bank for. I have no idea because <laughs> you're not going to build wealth that way. Not for the majority of us. You better take that money and put it in something that's going to multiply it over these next 10, 15 years for you. 
that can give you a bigger pot of gold at the end of the rainbow because you're going to need it. Because none of this stuff we buy, guys, ain't going to get no cheaper. It's only going to get more expensive. You do know that, right? Gas is going to fluctuate, but it's always going to be more expensive than it was last year. Food is always going to be more expensive than it was last year. Right? Now, these last couple of years, it went up unusually high because of inflation. Normally, food don't go up 9% a year. It normally don't. But it goes up at least 2 to 3% a year in normal times, guys. So every year, food costs, shelter costs, you know, energy costs, transportation costs, insurance costs. All of that stuff is going to go up, man. That, 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 that's called cost of living increase, right? That's a cost of living increase in our prices of our goods and services. Even in normal times, stuff goes up. What you going to do when the Fed bring down short-term interest rates over the next couple of years and your money market goes back down to 1% or 0.75 like it was in 2019, 2020? What you going to do then? Your money market ain't going to generate no income. Then what you going to do? So what I'm trying to tell you guys is coming. See, a lot of times we sit around and not like we bury our head in the sand like, this, like it ain't coming. It's coming. The Fed is going to reduce these rates over the next couple of years. And those money market accounts are going to go back down to what they were in 2019, which is basically nothing. Because they're tied to the short-term interest rate. See, when the short-term interest rate goes up, money market rates go up because that's what it's tied to. But, 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 but the reverse happens when they come down. They come down too. So this 3 or 4 or 5% you're getting in your money market account is, is wonderful, but it's short-lived. It's not going to outperform the S&P 500. Go look at your money market account at your local bank over the last 10 years and compare that to the S&P 500. <laughs> it ain't no comparison. S&P 500 and wiped, wiped its face with it, right? S&P 500 is probably in that 11, 12% range over the last 10 years. Your money market account is probably 50 basis points. Over the last year and a half, you've, you've done well, but it still ain't outperforming the S&P 500. This is why I try to tell people. Y'all try to act like, not all y'all, but some of y'all act like, oh, my money market, I'm getting 4%. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> but that 4% ain't it's short lived. It's not going to outperform the S&P 500, guys. It's not. So all I'm telling you is if you're in the building stage of wealth, stop keeping excess money in your bank account. Move some of that money to some other vehicle that gives you a better chance long term to get you an 8 to 10% rate of return consistently over the next 10 years. That's how you build wealth. That's the that's the. That's the type of multiplication you're going to need in order to get your assets big enough so that they take care of you. I'm just trying to give it to you straight, guys. You do whatever you want to do. It's your financial freedom. You want to sit there and, and, and bury your head in the sand and think these money market rates are going to sit at 4 or 5% for the rest of your life? They're not. Well, stock market's not guaranteed. No, it's not guaranteed, but look at history. Look at the history on it. Those couple videos I did, I don't know, last week, where I was telling you guys I was moving away from VOO and going to SPLG. I was moving away from VGT and going to FTEC. And I gave you guys the 10-year rate of return on these investments. It's, it's, it's over 10%, guys. Over 10%. The one-year rate of return on FTEC was 40%. It was a 40% ROI. How can your money market account? Listen, man, nothing wrong with keeping, like I said, the right amount of money in the money market account. But you can't build wealth long term if you're in the building stage of wealth. You can't build wealth long term just keeping money in your money market account unless you're a highly, highly compensated individual who has decided I'm just going to work my tail off stack the cash and then when i'm done i'll invest it to get income now that strategy will work too but you got to be a highly highly paid individual you got to be a highly paid individual remember i told y'all the average retiree the average retiree lives on fifty thousand dollars a year that's what the average retiree in the united states live on 
in order for you to generate $50,000 a year in passive income, guys, at a 5% rate of return in your money market, you got to have a million bucks in there. You got to have a million bucks in your money market at a 5% rate of return to generate $50,000 a year in passive income. I can have 500,000 in the S&P 500 at a 10% rate of return to generate my 50,000. That's the power of it. Now, like I said, if you're a highly compensated individual and you just have decided my strategy is just stacking the cash and keeping it in the bank, and then when I'm done running hard over the next 10 or 15 years, I'll look for investments to put it in, but I'm gonna have a million, $2 million in my money market because I'm a, I'm a highly paid individual, highly compensated individual. Nothing wrong with that strategy either. See, I wasn't a highly compensated individual <laughs> for most of my career. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't no highly, I was just a regular salary guy. Now, as I got better at my craft, as I got better and added more value to the market, my, my but shoot, man, that was on the second half of my career. I was in banging 25 years. I would say half of that time, I became a highly compensated individual. But for them first 12 years, I was grinding. You know, doing whatever I needed to do just to try to get an edge. So, don't, so, so, so the paper assets and the real estate, that helped me, guys. Or I wouldn't have made it. I'd still be working right now. So all I'm telling you is nothing wrong with keeping money in the bank. But don't keep excess money in the bank if you're in the building stage of wealth. Get that money in something that's going to multiply. I already gave you what I do from a personal finance standpoint, how I manage my money in the bank. And I'm going to give it to you one more time for people that are just new and popping into this thing. And then we're going to wrap it up. I have four accounts that I, I want to manage my money out of. My first and main and central account is my checking account. That's what I call my operating account. Everything comes into the operating account. Everything goes out of the operating account. So every time I get paid from anything I do, YouTube, affiliate marketing, side hustles, whatever, I sell some of my stock, and I, and I realize a capital gain, all that money goes into the operating account. And then from the operating account, I have three additional accounts. And guys, I apologize if there's a little bit of wind, it's a little windy out here. From the operating account, I have three additional accounts attached to the operating account. The first account is gonna be my emergency fund. That's where I'm gonna keep three to six months. In my case, I keep about 12 months in my emergency fund because I need a peace of mind, right? I, I, I have a lifestyle that, that carries a big stick when it comes from just kind of taking care of myself and what I want to do. So I'd rather have more money in the operating account. It just it helps me sleep better at night. You don't have to have 12 months. You can do three to six. I choose to do 12. So I keep that in the, I keep that in the emergency fund account. What's an emergency? Emergency is if I get sick, can't generate no income, that's the money I live on. If I get fired from a job and it takes me three months to get picked up somewhere else, that's the money I live on. It is not money I use for some make-believe emergency. Oh, well, my nail broke, so I, 250, I gotta get, get my nail done and I'll put it back in. Nope, that's not an emergency. That's not an emergency. Oh, gotta buy an outfit because I gotta go to this gala and I'll put it back in. Nope, that's not an emergency. It's for real emergencies, okay. So then I move on to the second account, which is my short-term fund, right? This is for money that I'm gonna use over the next 12 months to, for a purchase. It, it, it could be, okay, over the next 12 months, Richard, you know all three of the cars, they're gonna need to be serviced. You're gonna need stuff done to them. So why don't you go ahead and start peeling off money for that? Or it could be, okay, wanna put a down payment. Like when I was getting ready to buy the dream home, I knew I was gonna have to have a hefty down payment for the dream home. So, and I knew I was gonna need it in, in, within a 12 month period. I would peel off money out of the, out of the operating account and put it over there in, 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 that, in that short term fund so I could have the money ready to go for the down payment on the dream home. Or if I'm paying for my daughter's private school tuition or something like that, I pull that money, put it over there in the short term bucket. That's money I'm gonna be using in the next 12 months. So that's the second account that I use. 
So I got the operating account. I got the emergency fund account. I got the short term account. And then I got the third, the third account from the money from the main account. So I got four accounts, but the third account off of the main account, the operating account is going to be my long term account. That's for investing. That's the money I use to invest in ETFs, individual stocks, right? That, that's the money I use for long term wealth building. So that money comes out of the operating account. It sits in the long term investment account. And then I automatically transfer it out of that account to my brokerage accounts, Moo Moo, right? And that's where I go to building my wealth with that account. So those are the four accounts, guys, that I use and I keep in the bank. All I'm asking you is, is what is your strategy? What are you doing? What are you doing to make life a lot simpler for you when it comes to your finances? Do you have a system? Or do you just kind of keep it all up here in the filter system? See, I ain't smart enough to keep it all in the filter system or I'm gonna mess it up, right? I, I can't keep it in the filter system. Nor do I want to keep it in the filter system. See, I need the filter system to be clean and mean and, 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 and looking for opportunities. I don't need the filter system worrying about all these numbers, trying to keep stuff in my, uh-uh. All I want the filter system to do is, 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 is figure out ways to grow my money. I don't want to bog it down with any of this other stuff, right? So I keep the filter system clean and I just simply use old school method, right? I write my stuff down. Pencil and paper, I write it down, keep a log. Got, got, a, got a personal finance budget, I keep that. And then I keep my income and expense and my um, balance sheet, which is basically my assets and liability sheet. So I, I walk you guys through what I use, guys. It, it's my way of doing things financially. It doesn't have to be your way. The purpose is to get you to think about your methodology and, and how you manage your money. The better you become at managing your money, the, the more disciplined you are, the more consistent you become, the more patient you become, the, the more wealth you're going to build, guys. The more wealth you're going to build. So I hope that answered the question of how much money do I need to keep in my bank account? I actually gave you my scenario. You got to decide how much money you want to keep in there. Ultimately, it's your financial freedom, not mine. Right? It's yours. You got to figure it out. But, but what I will tell you, the people that actually build wealth, they know exactly what's going on in their personal finances. It's not chaotic. It's very simple and, and clean. Now, if you're at a higher level with money, you may have a, a, a money manager or a CPA or somebody like that that manages it for you. So I don't like that. I want to know. My, I want to manage my own stuff. I don't want to delegate my financial freedom to nobody else. I don't want nobody else in control of my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So that's why I do stuff on my own. I'm not saying I'll always do it that way, but for now, that makes me feel comfortable. I like to be in charge of my own financial freedom. I wanna be in charge of my own destiny. That doesn't mean I don't use a CPA, I do. But I only use my CPA for what? Tax strategy. I don't need my CPA managing my money for me. I don't need, my, I don't need nobody investing my money for me. What do I, I don't need that. What do I need that for? Well, who I am? Who I am? Bill Gates? <laughs> I mean, you know, you got that kind of money, I get it, but come on, man. You got a, you know, billion or two? What, what do you need a money manager for with a couple billion or, or less? You don't. It's just a waste of money. Do it yourself. Right? I get it if you got 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, 100 million dollars. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but none of us ain't got that. That's watching this video. Yeah, ain't nobody on this video watching this video or gonna watch it at any time in the future. With, with a hundred million dollar net worth nobody and i know that i don't have a hundred million dollar net worth but i'm okay with it i'm out here doing what i want to do enjoying my life don't need a hundred million dollar net worth never aspired to get to a hundred million dollar net worth i just wanted to get to my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so i can have my freedom so i can have more choices in my life right so i can have so, so i can control my time that's it man it never was about the money for me. I wasn't chasing a hundred million. I was chasing lifestyle. I chase lifestyle. <laughs> That's all I chase. I don't chase no money. I chase lifestyle. Right? I, 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 I chase lifestyle because I know at the end of the day, the money ain't gonna make me happy.
the lifestyle will. The lifestyle, the lifestyle I create for myself will. Money won't get it. Money is not gonna make me happy. Money is not the thing that I think about in the morning when I wake up. The first thing I think about in the morning when I wake up is thank God you woke me up. That's number one. Thank you, Jesus, for waking me up. Next thing I think about is, hey, Lord, bless me and bless my family today. It's, it's a war out here. It's a war out here. Send your angels to protect us. Send your angels to protect us today. And then I, I, I do a little something positive. I read something positive. Put it out on the, on the Facebook page. Put it out on the Twitter page. Why? Because I want people who follow me to know there's a light at the end of that tunnel for them. It's a lot of gloom and doom out there, man, but it's a light at the end of that tunnel for you, baby. Get yourself right. And then the third thing I do is, is I strategize on you guys, how to help y'all. That's how I go, guys. God, family, and then y'all. I said, well, okay, what, what are we going to talk about today? And guys, it, it, you know, when I come up with these concepts, man, it's just what I do is I say to myself, what would I want to know? What was important to me? What, what, what roadblock did I face that I could help them not face? And this, this was one of them. Because I get the question all the time from you guys. How much do I need to keep in this bank account? And, I, and I'd say, well, guys, it depends on your financial freedom and what you're trying to get accomplished. There's no one size fit all. You know, it, it's unique to every individual. That's the reason I just gave you my blueprint. Because I can't tell you what to keep in your account. I can't tell you how much money you need to invest. You got to figure that out. All of that is predicated on what financial goals that you've set for yourself. What results are you trying to achieve? What end game are you trying to get to? What destination are you trying to get to? So, 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 hey, what do I need to do? That's the wrong question you should be asking people, guys. No, you got to figure out what you need to do. You got to figure out what you want. And then go to people and say, hey, this is what I want. Can you help me get there? That's the question you should be asking. Not what do I need to do? Uh-uh. This is where I want to get to. How can you help me get there? That's it. That's the question. But you you can't, you got to know where you want to end up in order to get help. Right? That's just like somebody that got a substance abuse. That they, they you know, they got an addiction to something. Until they come to grips that they have that addiction and they're willing to admit it, they are never going to get help. They're never going to get help. I, I look at it the same way building wealth. Until you admit, I made some mistakes. But I've sat down. I've got my mind right. I know what my destination is. I just need some steps to help me get there. That's how we got to be living, guys, in this financial world. We got to be living that way. And I know a lot of y'all do. I know a lot of y'all do, and that's great. And that's the reason why I'm out here every day, on this channel every day, on these YouTube streets every day, trying to make it happen. Because I know my reward for doing this is tenfold. See, my reward comes from Lord, Lord, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's where my reward comes from. Everything that I have, everything that I did have, everything that I will have, comes from my creator Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior everything comes from everything comes from that place again guys I apologize for the wind noise it's just windy out here and yeah I ain't got no microphone and all that stuff I ain't gonna get no microphone either so please if you're here for the, the message the little bit of wind ain't gonna hurt you so just 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 hang in there we'll get past this little spurt here in a second but I'm, I'm, rounding, I'm rounding all the way to the house anyway, so I'm, I'm almost back to the house. I'm, I've been out here a little bit, so I apologize about the window. But back to what I was saying, everything I am, everything I will be is by the grace of God and his mercy. So, for, so, so, so this right here is what he's called me to do. Richard, get out and preach this financial gospel, and I'm going to take care of you. And guess what? For the last four years, matter of fact, for 55 years, he's taken care of me. He's got me out of all types of predicaments, guys. <laughs> he has, and he's always been there. He's my best friend. That's who I go to when I need counseling. 
That's who I go to when I lose. That's who I go to when I win. I hope you got something in your life, man, that's, that's bigger than you. I don't know if it's Jesus Christ. I don't know if it's God. But you better have something. You can't do it by yourself, guys. You better have a spiritual connection to something. You better have a spiritual connection to something. Because this life will chew you up and spit you out. Especially for you young folks who just started now, man. Tie into something, boy, bigger than you. I know this is a finance channel, and I'm not here to try to convert nobody. That's not my thing. God ain't called me. I mean, God has called me to preach the financial gospel. There are other people out here that's trying to do other things. That, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just giving y'all, giving it to you real. If you don't follow me, you might as well know who I am. I ain't no need me sugarcoating it. You might as well know what I believe. Right? But I also believe that you can do whatever you want to do. You just got to put your mind to it. Look at this community, man, I live in. It's crazy. But this is what you can do when you build wealth and you get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You can have whatever you want to have. I like this tranquility. I like walking on these, these sidewalks and, and nobody bothering me. Right? Nobody doing anything to me. I ain't doing nothing to nobody. Just enjoying my life. And I hope that is where y'all want to get to at some point in your life. Well, guys, I appreciate you stopping in. Don't forget me now. Down in that description box is that Moo Moo link. That's the, that's the brokerage account that I'm going to be rocking with to build wealth in 24. Y'all know 24 is a wealth transfer year. We need a great brokerage account in order to help us buy paper, asset, paper assets and get there. So if you want up to 15 free stocks, Moo Moo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks. You put $100 in that brokerage account, they're going to give you five free stocks. You put $1,000 in that brokerage account, they're going to give you 15 free stocks. Link down in the description box if you want to rock with me and use the brokerage app I use down in the description box. Because I'm going to be making a lot of videos throughout 2024 using that Moo Moo app, buying my favorite individual stocks, Magnificent 7, and buying my two favorite ETFs. SPLG, FTEC, and we're going to build some wealth in 2024. So if you want to rock with me, go down to the description box and click on that Moo Moo link. Open up your new Moo Moo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Stop by the channel for the first time. Oh, before I do that, lock it in with a thumbs up, guys. Lock it in with a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Lock it in for me with a thumbs up. That, that's really important to this YouTube thing to get this content out to more people. And that's the goal. We just want to help more people. So lock it in with a thumbs up. I want y'all to have an amazing, amazing week. Y'all know I'm coming back at you every single day, multiple times a day. I get it if you can't get all the content. But hey, support your boy because I support you. Do me a favor. Support me because I support you. And I really would appreciate you. Again, lock it in with a thumbs up. Stop by the channel for the first time. Please consider subscribing, share the videos, smash the like button. Thoughts become things. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.